Today on Driving Television, we're featuring what could be the most unusual car we've ever come across. It's called the XOF1, and it's out to break the world distance record for a solar car. During its stop in Vancouver, British Columbia, we had a close encounter with its pilot, Marcelo Deleuze. Marcelo, what made you want to build a solar car, head out on an adventure and try and set the longest world record with a solar vehicle? What made you want to do that? Well, Zach, like I think we're a bunch of hypocrites just waiting for the government, someone or something to save the planet for us. It's not going to happen. We have to take ownership, we have to take responsibility and do whatever we can. And building a solar car and taking on the greatest challenge I could find, it's my way of doing my share for the environment and hopefully inspire people along the way to do their share as well. So for a guy who is a flight attendant for a living, did you just get in your garage and start building? Did you have other friends come in? How did you do it? Actually, this is a very interesting project. It actually became one of the most international solar care project, projects in the world. Uh, most of the people behind this project are homemakers, flight attendants, nurses, people from all walks of life, not necessarily engineers. How much did it cost to put together? Oh, I have spent about half a million dollars on the car, but it probably cost a lot more if you would put a, a, a dollar figure to all the hours that went into it. It takes about 50,000 hours to build a car. Uh, one way of looking into it, it is an electric car. It has a bank of batteries. We're using lithium ion polymer batteries to store energy. It has an electric motor, but instead of plugging to the wall to charge the batteries, you plug into the sun. The top of the car is covered in solar cells, and the cells convert light into electricity. Altogether, there are 893 cells. They're 15% efficient, and they generate as much as 900 watts. Now, to put things in perspective, a toaster consumes about 1,000 watts. And with less energy than a toaster, we can drive this car. How far can you drive it? Uh, if the batteries are full at night, we can drive the car for 200 kilometers on a flat terrain. And during the day, if it is a bright sunny day, we can drive the car for as, as far as four, uh, 500 kilometers. Right, the motor turns itself into a generator, so when you are going downhill, you can use that to slow down the car and charge the batteries. Also, when you want to stop the car, use the motor. And that's an elegant way of recovering energy. Yeah, in order to maximize the aerodynamic of the car, I don't have rear view mirrors. I have a micro camera at the back instead. So to see what's happening behind the car, you look to a micro display, a portable viewer that goes right in front of the driver's eye. And there is a lot of technology that has been developed over the years for solar cars that's finding its way into other industries and automotive as well. For example, solar cars were the first vehicles to use LEDs for turn signals and brake lights. And now you see LEDs and, uh, and, and brake lights and turn signals on, on all new cars. So how fast does it go? Well, it goes from 0 to 85 in 6 seconds. Wow. Top speed is 120 kilometers an hour. So what do you say to people who want an electric car? And what do you say to the manufacturers who are not providing them yet? I would say keep on pressing the manufacturers, uh, asking them to put a, a, a car on the market that you buy.